Welcome to Fans Assemble, where we come together to talk about all the things we fan over, like comic books, movies, sports, or anything else that we love. We hope you enjoy the show. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the fight, the Fans Assemble podcast. Almost got that wrong. Here, I have my uh, friend Mike returning. We're going to be talking about UFC Fight Night, San Hagen versus Yadong, taking place in the Las Vegas uh, fight, UFC Fight a- Apex. Um, it's a pretty good card at the top. You know, not the most notable names, especially coming off of a card where we just had Nate Diaz and Tony Ferguson fighting. Uh, the, the Fight Night cards have been a little bit thin, especially when they have the fight at the Apex, I'm assuming because there's no crowd and, you know, they try to save the the big time fight, the big name fighters for the crowd events. Uh, but nonetheless, there's going to be some good action this Saturday and uh, should be very exciting, at least for the top. So the first fight we're going to start off with is takes place at the featherweight division at uh, 145 pounds. Andre Touchy Feely versus Bill Aljo. Uh, Andre Feely is 21 and 9. He is 5'11 with a 74 inch reach. He is about, let me see how old he is. He's about 32 years old. Bill Aljo is 16 and 6. He is 6 feet tall. So he's very tall for a featherweight. 73 inch reach. So he will be at 1 inch reach disadvantage. And he is about, I believe, 33 years old. So what immediately jumps off the page for you, Mike, going into this fight between these two? I just want to say, I mean, these guys have been fighting a good amount, especially Aljo. I mean, he just fought in July in the uh, Mm -hmm. event at UBS Arena in Elmont. So it's kind of, uh, you've got two guys that are, are, and the feeling last fought uh, Jonathan Brito back in back in late April. So these are two guys that have fought this year. They've been fighting a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, Very and, but what the difference I saw here between these two competitors was that Feely's kind of in a little bit of a cold streak. Um, yeah. He hasn't been winning his fights. Um, and this is one where he needs kind of the win really, really badly. Um, he's actually going into the fight as a slight favorite. Um, and I would reckon that is more just based off of, of the fact that he's a little bit more experienced. Yeah, he's been um, around for a while, yeah. Yeah, and, and he's he's been around the block for a long period of time. And that's what I think also is really an interesting aspect of this fight because I think it creates um, – there's a very, the, you know, Aljo is a very, very solid underdog here. I think Absolutely. His, his chances of winning this fight are very good. And it's really like, like I said, Philly's last fight was against Joe Anderson Brito, which he lost by TKO. And, you know, Aljo was able to beat him prior to beating Herbert Burns back in July. Um, so that's kind of one of those things that puts me on upset alert here for, for Philly. Mm-hmm. But it's a dynamic of can Philly really kind of save his career here with the win? And it's well, um, in our last kind of two event coverages, we've kind of touched upon fights where it was make or break for the competitors involved. We've seen some mixed results. Like DiCirico kind of comes to mind, right? He had a muscle yeah. fight and he didn't win it. And he had to you know, ultimately decide to step away from the UFC. Um so for Feely, this is a fight where, you know, to make the case for him, he has to win it to keep his career going in a positive direction. So um, hard time on this one. But I so, think mm-hmm. – Go ahead. Sorry. I think in this one, I, I, I'm going to have to say that, uh, that I'll just kind of – I think he's going to squeak out of this one by decision in the upset. I don't think he's going to get a finish. Um, he'll squeak it out in a very tight decision and get the win. But this one really could go either way. Yeah, that's something I, I recognize with this card overall. Um, most of them on paper, they, they're very close. And uh, it's kind of a coin toss for uh, most of the fights that we're covering. I, I agree with your um, analysis that Andre Feely, right, he should be the favorite because he's been around for a while. I've always been kind of a little bit of a fan of the... I always thought he was a little underrated, right? He comes from Team yeah. Alpha Male. 
uh, you know, most uh, MMA fans know them. They, they coach so many fighters like Uriah Faber and Cody Garbrandt. And he's kind of like the most unknown of all of them. But I always thought his skills were very good. And you always got this feeling that, you know, Andre was always around. He was one day going to break through into the elite. But that just never came. And you know, he's uh, only 32 years old, but he does, he's does. he been around for a while, like you said. So that equals into MMA miles on the body. And they are similar where they both are very long, very uh, lanky. They both fight very long. Uh, and Andre Freely has very good kickboxing. Bill Aljo has a very interesting karate style. Uh, the big difference between them, two of them technically, which is uh, the, the rebuttal, I think, for... I, I'm probably going to agree with you. I'm going to side towards Aljo a little bit. But the the big difference, I think, could be for Andre Freely is, one, the experience, like you said, right? He, he knows he has to win this fight. He knows what it's like to have, um, you know, the momentum is very low for him uh, going into this. Is the wrestling. Andre Feely does like to wrestle in spurts. He does have good MMA wrestling. Mm-hmm. I can see that coming into play with Aljo. Um, you know, you mentioned the Herbert Burns fight with Aljo. He, he did get grappled a lot in that fight. And he was able to survive and he showed his toughness to get out of those. Uh, which could be a confidence booster going into this fight. But... Despite all the the experience and the the wrestling advantage that Andre Feely is going to have, I do I, I'm I do think Bill Aljo is going to win. I I think that uh, Andre Feely, there's a huge chance that he could be slowing down, and that knockout in his last fight was just the first sign of it. Okay, so I I'm going to agree with you. I think uh, Bill Aljo will win. You you said by uh. Decision, right? Yeah, I had I had this one by decision, and it's kind of in agreement with the points you just made. Where I feel like feel he's going to be able to play to some strengths and avoid getting finished. But I think you know. But I you know, I was watching some some uh, some footage of, of Philly earlier, and then and I don't think you can take away that he's very very tough, and he'll hang in there in a stand up situation, and and. And compete. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I I just don't see him getting taken out, getting knocked out by Aljo here. I, I think he's too durable for that. Um, yeah, I think he's gonna be too smart, right? Like you said, he's gonna be able to. Maybe he'll get hurt, but he'll stick in the right spots to avoid getting knocked out. Right, and I think just maybe yeah. if Aljo's able to get you know, some more significant strikes in and whatnot and survive, like you said, on the mat and get out of situations, that's going to certainly put him in, in direction to win the fight by decision. But I I think if, I think if Philly's going to get the upset in this fight, I think, like you mentioned, it's going to either take a really perfect day on the mat and, yeah. and get the decision that way, or he's going to, you know, stick in and, and, and win it the hard way. But – I, I think Aljo's going to gonna come out on top of this. Same. I, even if uh, Andre Feely uh, can get the wrestling going, you know, take Aljo down and, like you said, win rounds. Uh, Andre Feely, even though I did accredit him to being a very good rest, uh, MMA wrestler, wrestling is not something that he will just say, I'm going to continuously, like, push him against the fence, take him down, kind of, like, blanket him. Uh, that's something he doesn't necessarily do that much. And that could play into Bill Aljo's favor because Aljo, he has, like, very, very good cardio. So I could see that coming into uh, – and, and like you said, it's going to – most likely no one's going to get finished this fight. We'll, uh, so – and, uh, you know, the cardio will matter. We're going a 15-minute fight. And these two guys do go hard very quickly. And, uh, you know, they start very quickly, both of them. So – the right game plan, like you said, will be important. I think you're going to see some good stand-up spots at the beginning of the round, you know, at the beginning of the fight, um, for sure. I think they're going to go at each other. I don't think it's going to be a lazy fight, uh, especially you know, because there's there's a good amount on the line here for these competitors. Yeah. Um, so it should be interesting, but you know, uh, I think decision is the likeliest outcome. Yeah. So we're telling you to expect 15 minutes of a good action. All right, so moving on to our next fight. 
the co-main event, I, I do think it's going to be very exciting. Is uh, Chi yeah. and Jikawani versus Gregory Rodriguez. Do you, don't you think Gregory sort of looks like uh, Obama? <laughs> That's what everybody tells me. He looks like Obama. You know, I didn't. that didn't really come to my head when I saw yeah. him. I have to take another look at him, but. I, I didn't think of that, no. <laughs> okay. So, uh, this fight's taking hey, place. Maybe, Obama's, maybe Obama's on a, under a fake uh, persona. He's he's chosen a, a new path post president. A new career, right? He just... <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, GD and Jaguani is 22 and 7. He has 6'3, 80 inch reach, which should play a big part of this fight. And I believe he is 33 years old. Gregory Rodriguez is 12 and 4, yeah. also 6'3, but he will have a 75 inch reach. So he will be, uh, he will have a 5 inch reach disadvantage. And he is only 30 years old, surprisingly, uh, for how old he kind of looks. Um, uh, two guys known for striking. You know, of course, Rodriguez does have a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu black belt. We've seen it in spurts in the UFC, uh, Chi and Jacobani. Came off the Contender Series. He's been very, very good. Yeah. Uh, some MMA fans will know him from his Bellator career, which he, he was very good and excellent. That's where I knew him from. So, Mike, what did you think uh, when you started reading up on this Coleman event here? Yeah, the first thing that came to mind is that I think this fight's going to be an absolute war. Yeah. And I, I like the background. I, I think we've seen a lot of really good performances from – uh, I'm a big fan of the Dana White Contender Series. I think it's producing a lot of phenomenal talent. And if you mm-hmm. watch it week to week, a lot of great fights and a lot of great finishes. And another thing about about Chidi, I noticed uh, he's he's a strong finisher. Um, and I think this is a fight between two competitors that are going to look to really establish themselves. And I think a highlight finish in this fight is exactly um, – what a young blooming star like Chidi needs um, mm-hmm. in order to push forward. Now he is a slight dog going into this fight. Um, that didn't slow me down from the previous one supporting Aljo. Uh, but yeah. like I said, this is another one where the odds are very, very tight. There's no heavy favorite here. Um, but I do have an instinctual feeling here that Chidi's going to be really, really hungry. And he's going to come out and finish this fight. And, and get a, a KO victory on, on Rodriguez. So, I have a similar sentiment that, you know, these two guys are really going to want to finish. Um, you know, both of them very high momentum. Gregory, of course, been in the UFC slightly longer than Chidi. And the thing I'm particularly looking at is the way the two styles match up where Chidi, he is very, very good striking. Uh, you know, 33 years old, but in terms of MMA, he, he's always been very good at keeping distance, knowing uh, what spots are dangerous for him uh, in, in the stand-up game. And the main disadvantage I see for Gregory is he's like primarily his, – his strikes are done with his boxing, with his hands. And Chidi, he's known for his elbows, his knees, his kicks, and he's just – like I said before, he has a five-inch reach advantage. So, also, he's not a bad puncher himself, a bad boxer himself. And, uh, <clears throat> and I get 100% see Gregory coming forward. I do think he's going to come forward most of the fight. And just eating shots, um, being stuck on the outside. And, you know, Chidi, even though he's known for, like you said, he, he has a lot of finishers, he is very experienced. I have seen, you know, he's gone the distance before in his fights. Uh, especially in three round, and he's gone the distance before in three round fights. I do think he can keep up the footwork if he needs to, and he has a very good clinch game if uh, Gregory gets close. The biggest X factor for me is uh, Gregory Rodriguez. We barely see him in his MMA fights go for takedowns. He is very good on the ground from what we've seen of him, but the chances are he probably. Most likely is he may not go to the ground. Even if he tries to go to the ground, he still has to find a way to get around everything of Chidi. And uh, 
So either way, he has to figure out how to get him past the strikes, whether he decides to wrestle or use his jiu-jitsu or not. Um, that's why I, I agree with you. I do think Chidi and Chukwani is going to win this fight. I, I don't know if it's going to be a finish. I do think it's going to be very exciting. Um, I just think that Ninja Gawani is going to have more tools in his uh, toolbox in this one. You think uh, the fight will end via finish, Mike? Yeah, I have a, a, a GD, uh winning this fight by knockout either in like the late second. Um, uh-huh. No, I, I think it's going to go longer than that. I think that, that would be too early. Um, I, I think Chidi's going to gonna get the knockout finish. Probably, uh, I think, late three, early four, somewhere in that fight. I think, like you said. This is a three-round fight, three-round fight. Yeah. Okay, it is. And then Comey, they're not doing five. Okay. Um, yes, you the said late little, three, yeah. Yeah, the, the cards have been all over the place. I don't, like, I don't worry about it, yeah. But uh, the whole thing here is that I, I think, like you mentioned, Chidi has a lot of tools and a lot of weapons. And if Greg wants to stand up and stay with him the whole fight, I, I see it backfiring on him, and and ultimately Chidi's going to get that finish. And I think if he gets a really, really beautiful highlight reel type finish, it's going to do wonders for his career and exactly what he needs right now. Um, and I see him going out and doing it. Yeah, and uh, these two guys, they're very close to being ranked to both of them. You know, they they fought guys who are formerly ranked or or known for being on the cusp of being ranked. And the uh, one thing, it is tricky to pick this fight because if Gregory, if he doesn't decide to use his grappling, the other only other way he could kind of win is like he decides to make this like a very dirty fight. But even then, like he still has to deal with all the strikes and the length of Enjo Uh So we're going to go with, uh, both of us are going to go with Chidi Enjo I think it's going to, I think it's going to be a. It's definitely going to be a war. I do think that it's going to be a finish, and uh, like you said, you believe a third round TKO is in store for Enjikawan. So going in to the main event, you and I have been talking about this one for a while. It's going to be your number three ranked bantamweight, Corey Sanhagen, versus Song Yadong. Uh, let me see. Let me bring up the stats on the two of them. Corey Sanhagen is fourteen and four. He's five eleven, so he is like gigantic, gigantically tall for a bantamweight. Seventy inch reach advantage. Seventy inch. He will have a three inch reach advantage over Yadong, and he is thirty years old. Yadong, he is nineteen and six. He is five eight, sixty seven inch reach, and I believe. He is 26 years old. 24 years old, excuse me. Uh, so the, the momentum going into this fight, I'm sure you're going to touch upon. Just to point out, this is uh, – most people will note that this is the most stacked division in the UFC, they believe. You know, I, I always, of course, debate that it's 155 pounds, but there's a lot at stake going into this one. So what what did you see when you, uh, when you studied for this match with Mike? Yeah, um, a very high stakes fight in a very crowded division. Uh, like you mentioned, I do think there are title implications about mm-hmm. this fight, and really difficult to predict. I know a lot of people are saying that Sanhagen's going to get finished um, in an upset, um, but I think to avoid that, what Sanhagen really has to do is he has to take this fight to the mat. Um, yeah, and if he's able to do that. And avoiding heavy damage, then I think the odds, as they suggest, um, he'll be in a good position to steer the fight and win it. Um, but I do see the ability here for Song to finish Sanhagen. Um, yeah, I, I think he's got very, very tricky hands, and I think. Very fast, athletic. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I think that possibility is strongly there, and I'm really looking forward to this fight. Um, 
I'm having a real hard time predicting who's going to win this one. Um, but I do feel deep down, as much as I feel that Sung can get the finish, I, I do think Sanhagen's going to gonna be able to spend a lot of time on the ground and, and win some rounds and then ultimately win the fight by decision. Um, and that's kind of how I see this one going down. Um, but it should be entertaining. It should be suspenseful. And there should be some really good contact and strikes. Yeah, these two are definitely not going to be afraid to go at each other. Yeah, exactly. And so it's going to be a good balance. You know, if if you're a fan of of all aspects of the sport, I think it's going to be a a well-balanced fight. And I think they're going to approach each other with everything they've got. Um, and if Sanhagen can can get him down and and uh, win some rounds that way with a little bit of an edge, then I think he gets it done by decision. But this should, like I said, be a good one. That and it's and it's really unpredictable. All these fights are really. Uh, I know a yeah. lot of people think Sanhagen's a heavier favorite. The odds are kind of leaning to him to be a stronger favorite. But I, I think this is a really toss up fight, and, and I'm looking forward to seeing what happens. So, for me, jumping off of the you know, the things that caught my attention, you know, Corey Sanhagen, he is coming off of two losses. Uh, granted, you know, DJ Dillashaw, former champion, former two-time champion, now fighting for the title again. And then Piotr Jan, who a lot of people thought he was the best Bantamweight for a while. Um, but, you know, those two losses, they could be strength, uh, good strength for him because, you know, he didn't get finished. It wasn't like he got tossed around or anything, but you never know uh, how his confidence is and, you know, physically how that meant, how those fights felt to him. And, but you can also use those as confidence because he has a gigantic experience advantage over Song Yadong. You know, Song Yadong, his best win was against Marlon Marais, who just retired after that fight. And, uh, you know, Marias was just, you know, he, he couldn't hold his cardio. His durability was gone. And so I thought that that matchup was very favorable to him. And uh, you, that, that, like you said, it's a perfect example of how Song Yadong wins, right? He just – you notice how he kind of just throws, right? Like like with reckless abandonment kind of. Like um, he kind of reminds me of like a young – just a young man who can't lose. Yeah. And I – I thought uh, I do think that Sanhagen basically he has an advantage everywhere in this fight, in my opinion. Besides the power in the hands, obviously Yadong has that. But you know, I, Corey has you know good kicks, good flying knees, elbows, things like that. Good strikes to the body. But I thought what you brought to the table was very interesting. I don't think a lot of people are talking about it. Is that Corey Sanhagen? He could hundred percent possibly take this to the ground. I do think in a 25-minute fight, he will try at least a couple of times. He, he does try to take people down at least once every fight, if it lasts that long. Um, and I do think he's going to implement that because there's 25 minutes. Yadong is very hard to knock out. It's going to be in the smaller cage, so he's going to need, he's gonna have to find ways to you know burn the clock, try to win some points. And uh, that's why it's a little bit more simple for me. I, I see what you mean that uh, Yadong could 100% catch Corey Sanhagen cold uh, in the beginning of the, of the of the fight, like in the first round. We've seen Corey be a little bit, uh, you know, I don't want to say slow starter, but he is slightly a slow starter. And, um, but to me, I just think Sanhagen is a better striker. He's more experienced than Yadong. Uh, you know, he, I do think he's probably the better grappler, even though Yadong's very good at the, like defending takedowns and getting up, but I think Corey's going to do it enough to win a 25 minute fight and to show uh, Yadong all the tools he has. So you, you said by decision, right? Yeah, yeah, I'm going the same way. I think Corey Sanhagen via decision. Yeah, I, I think you know the whole idea of Sanhagen getting to the mat is a way just to create a differentiation. Because if there is situations where he finds himself getting outstriked, which could happen, of course, in the fight, whether it's early, um, more likely to be early, um, 
then it gives him a way to kind of bounce back, slow things down, catch his breath, get his focus, and then, you know, push forward and, and rebound and, and, um, and go forward in the fight. And so it kind of just creates a pathway to one, um, using it as a form of defense mm-hmm. and then also using it as a way to transform the fight and take it to where, you know, different place. And, and then that could really be the key to, uh, especially if it's going to be a tight, uh, tight decision, tight finish, um, could really be all the difference. You know, if he can win like no rounds by being on the ground. Yeah. I think you said it perfectly. That could be the difference. Like Yadong, uh, all his fights, I see him getting hit and then, you know, he like gestures, like it doesn't hurt. Um, he's probably going to have, not that Corey Sanhagen has a bad chin. Corey Sanhagen very, very durable. But let's say Yadong is more durable than him. Let's say he has more power in the hands. It would be very useful for Corey to break up that, um, you know, the striking rhythm of uh, of uh, Yadong. So basically you and I are predicting uh, it's going to be most likely, you know, of course Yadong could win. He'll probably win in the beginning if he does win. But it will most likely be Corey Sanhagen showing a lot of his skills, showing the striking, his footwork. And then uh, mixing in the wrestling when he can to stop the confidence and the pressure of Song Yudong. So uh, that's pretty much it for us for today's episode. Um, should be some very good fights this Saturday. Uh, thank you guys for listening. Hope you enjoyed it because we enjoyed it. And uh, see you guys all next time. Bye. Take care. Thank you for listening to the podcast. If you like what you were listening to, please subscribe to Fans Assemble. And if you can, please give us a rating. Do it for the audio world. They need you.